Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology, and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson Ed Excel International A Level, Biology Unit 1 for October 2021. This is the part 1 video. I'll put the link to the part 2 video below the description box. Let's begin with the first question. Question 1 says, mutations can give rise to cancer. What is a mutation? A mutation is a random change to the best sequence of DNA. And when we look among the answers provided here, C is the perfect answer. A mutation is a change in the bad sequence of DNA. Part B says name two types of mutations. Here I wrote a deletion mutation, substitution mutation, as well as insertion mutation. So if you had written two of these, you'll get the one mark that was awarded for this part. Let us continue to the next part. Part C says... The graph shows the number of cases of one type of cancer in a human population. So they've given us a graph here and you can see the vertical axis has the number of cases of cancer per 100,000 in a population. And the horizontal axis has age in years. Here they've given us a key, one for males and another for females. So this curve here is for males and this curve here is for females. We can see earlier onset of cancer among females than males, and we can see that the number of cases among females are higher than those among males until about 57 years. And after that, there are more cases in males than in females. For every graph question you're given, you have to look through the data in order to fully understand it before you attempt to answer any question. So let us look at the question they've asked here. They say describe the effect of age and sex on the number of cases of cancer. When they ask you to describe, they want you to write about what you see or what you've observed from the data. So I said, age increases the number of cases of cancer in both males and females. That is observed from the data. We can see for both cases, as age increases, we can see the number of cases also increase. And also we can see that up to 57 years, the cases are higher in females than in males, while after 57 years, the number of cases is higher in males than in females. Also, the onset of cancer is earlier in females than in males. Let us continue to question two. Question two says, warfarin is a drug used to treat people who have a blood clot. Read through the following passage about warfarin. Write on the dotted line the most appropriate word or words to complete the passage. This passage is about blood clotting, and we know thromboplastin will catalyze the conversion of prothrombin into thrombin, and then thrombin will be the enzyme to catalyze the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. So I'm going to use this information to fill in the spaces. They begin by saying warfarin is used to treat people with blood clots as it lowers the number of clotting factors in the blood. One clotting factor in blood is prothrombin. Prothrombin is converted to the enzyme thrombin by thromboplastin. The active sites of thrombin, which is the enzyme, they bind to fibrinogen, and as a result, a mesh of fibers and platelets is formed. In this case, you could say a mesh of fibers and some of these blood cells, you could say red blood cells or white blood cells, that could be acceptable as well. Roman 2 says which type of drug is warfarin? Warfarin is an anticoagulant because it prevents coagulation of blood, of course we know that. You should know that antihypertensives are involved in lowering blood pressure, while statins are involved in lowering cholesterol. So the answer here should be an A, it is an anticoagulant. The time taken for a blood sample to form a blood clot can be measured. This is called the clotting time. The graph shows the blood clotting time after a patient has stopped taking warfarin. So from the graph, we can see the blood clotting time is going to be decreasing. However, it decreases in a curve form. The question says, calculate the rate of decrease in the clotting time at two days after stopping taking warfarin. They want us to use a tangent for our calculation. So you should come at two days and then draw a tangent to the curve at that specific time. And then we find the gradient of a tangent. I am going to zoom in a little bit to show you how I did this. So I draw a tangent at that point. This is the two day mark. I draw a tangent there. And then I found specific points around the tangent I had drawn. I took this point here, which is 1.523, and that point here, which is 2.519, and I calculated my gradient as here, 23 minus 19 divided by 1.5 minus 2.5, and 
and that gave me 4 over negative 1, which was negative 4. However, the question asked us about decrease. So since it's a decrease, then I have to find the magnitude of that, so I converted it to a positive value. The lines I drew here are to show you that whatever I get should be positive because they wanted to get the rate of decrease, so the answer was 4. Question 3. Many animals have a heart in circulation. The diagram shows the structure of a human heart. They want you to label the diagram with the names of four major blood vessels. So we can see this is the right part of the heart and that is the left part of the heart. This is where we have the oxygenated blood and that is where we have oxygenated blood. This blood vessel brings in oxygenated blood from the lungs and that should be called the pulmonary vein. While well, this blood vessel here takes blood from this right part of the heart, so it takes blood to the lungs, and that should be called the pulmonary artery. Now, when we see this part here, this is connected to this blood vessel here, which is called the iota. This one here is the vena cava, which is the superior vena cava, because this one is the inferior vena cava. So the answer should be iota, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, and the superior vena cava. Here they say the table shows some structures and types of blood vessels that they are found in. They want you to put a cross in each row to show where these structures are found. So we see the structures, lining of endothelial cells. This is found in arteries, in capillaries, as well as veins. They all have endothelial cells. Valves along the length of the blood vessels. These are only found in veins in order to prevent the backflow of blood. So the answer should be that. And here we see wall only, one cell thick. These are found in the capillaries, and the answer should be here. Moving on, the graph shows the velocity of the blood as it flows through the arteries into the capillaries and then into the veins. The artery, arterioles, capillaries, venules, as well as veins. This graph shows us the velocity of blood flow as we move from large arteries all the way until the veins. They want us to describe the changes in the velocity of the blood as it flows from the artery to the vein. As blood flows from the larger arteries to the smaller arteries, we see there is a slight decrease in the velocity of blood. However, as it flows through the arterioles, there is greater decrease in the velocity of the blood. Then through the capillaries, it's kind of maintained and then begins to increase in the venues. So I said, velocity of blood flow decreases as blood flows through the arterioles. Then the blood velocity is low as blood flows through the capillaries, meaning it's going to be maintained lower. Then blood velocity increases as the blood flows through the venules. So you can see there is a decrease here as it flows through the arterioles. There is slight maintenance as it flows through the capillaries. And then there is an increase as it goes through the venules in order to be maintained back in the veins. So this is the end of question three. Let's continue to question four. Question 4. The butterfly is an insect that feeds on nectar produced by flowers. The photograph shows a butterfly feeding on a flower. The nectar in flowers contains nutrients including sugars, amino acids, and lipids. The sugars in the nectar are fructose, glucose, and sucrose. Which of these contains glycosidic bonds? Glycosidic bonds should not be in monosaccharides, so this is out and that is out. They should be at least in a disaccharide like sucrose. So the answer here among these three should be sucrose only. Which row of the table describes how amino acids are joined together to form a protein? Amino acids are joined together through a condensation reaction and a peptide bond is formed. Condensation reactions involve, in this case, loss of water. So the suitable answer here should be a C. Here they say, which row of the table describes a saturated lipid? When they say saturated, it means it has no carbon-carbon double bond. And then they say carbon to hydrogen ratio. This should be lower than in unsaturated fatty acids because saturated fatty acids have more hydrogen. So the carbon to hydrogen ratio should be lower and therefore the answer should be a B. Here they say the circulatory system of an insect is described as an open system. This means that the blood is not contained inside blood vessels but flows through cavities called sinuses. The diagram shows part of the circulatory system of an insect. Here they say conducting vessels, meaning blood flows out of the conducting vessels into spaces within the body called sinuses. Here we have the heart. You can see it's there. It pumps blood from the abdomen towards the head. And here we can see the blood flows over the organs and drains back into the heart. Here we have the head, 
we have the thorax and we have the abdomen. That is the whole length of the whole insect. So let's go to the next page and look at the questions. The first question says, the length of the head of the butterfly is four millimeters. The thorax is six millimeters and the abdomen is 18 millimeters. Estimate the surface area to volume ratio of the butterfly. They want you to assume that the insect is a cylinder of diameter four millimeters and the surface area is 360 millimeters squared. So we know that the whole length of the insect is made up as we can go back here. There is the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So we are going to use that, assuming this is a cylinder, the total length should be 18 plus four plus six, which is the abdomen, the head, as well as the thorax. And that gives us a total length of 28 millimeters. However, we also have the diameter, which is four millimeters. And if we convert that to radius, it's going to be two millimeters. Since its body is assumed to be a cylinder, the volume should be pi r squared h, which is pi times radius squared times the length. And the answer was 352 millimeters cubed. Now the surface area to volume ratio should be the surface area 360 to 352, which gave me 1.0221. And that was my answer here. The next part they say, explain why the circulation of a butterfly is different from the circulation of a murmur. This is going to be different based on the metabolic demands as well as the size of the organism. So I said a butterfly is small and the cells of the tissues will not be far away from the sinuses. So the effusion of blood will occur efficiently to supply oxygen and nutrients for respiration. So insects therefore do not require a closed circulatory system. In the case of animals and other organisms that require closed circulatory system, it's because their surface area to volume ratio is quite lower. They also have many metabolic demands and therefore efficient supply of oxygen and nutrients for aerobic respiration is very important. Moving on to the last part here, they say, the blood flowing through the sinuses of a butterfly is separated from the organs by collagen. Describe the structure of collagen. I said collagen is a fibrous protein. It is made up of molecules containing three stranded helices of polypeptides with hydrogen bonds between them. The short repeating sequences of amino acids are usually glycine with proline and hydroxyproline. So that is very important that you know that. So this brings us to the end of question four, as well as to the end of this first part of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.